Good morning and welcome to the birthday edition. Today is my birthday, but here's the thing. I'm giving you the gift. I am going to talk to you about something that if you can grab a hold of it, it will radically, radically change your life. One of the problems that I see in most people's lives is they do not understand the supernatural and the reality of we live in a natural world and make those two coexist. I know people that are so spiritual, they're no naturally good. That I know some people who are such natural-minded people, they will never be able to apply the supernatural or prophetic to their life. So, on my birthday, we're gonna talk about this. I wanna to talk to you about reality and the real, the real, real world that we live in, okay? So, you have to understand, starting off, let's go Easter. I love talking about this. On Easter, we celebrate, he's alive! He's alive. Jesus is alive. Great. Since he's alive, where's he at? If he's alive, where's he at and what's he doing? He is at the right hand of the Father interceding for you and I. That's what people don't grasp reality of. Jesus Christ is alive, sitting at the right hand of the Father in the heavenly place interceding for you and I. Now, Matthew 6.10 says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So since Jesus is alive, interceding over you and I, what is he praying? He is praying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Every one of us has a supernatural, heavenly realm, kingdom realm, kingdom of God assignment on our lives to carry it out in the nat, I've been holding this coffee cup for a while, the natural realm. My covenant friend, Apostle Ron Strange, always says, when you put your, I meant God's super on your natural, that is the supernatural, okay? His super on your natural, that's the supernatural. You, you see a very, very small percentage of people who are actually moving in their kingdom mandate, okay? One of the stories I tell often when I preach is um, probably about four or five years ago, the conference thing, vibe, trail was blazing hot. And man, I would preach sometimes two, three different churches, conferences, revivals, a weekend, week, just traveling all the time. And I noticed that there would be what I call conference revival junkies. They would go to conference after conference after conference, run to the altar wanting a prophetic word. And I remember there was these, this one group of uh, of young ladies, and they were real nice, real kind young ladies, but just a little, just a, that they, it didn't connect the dots on a few things. And I saw them in the lower part of Louisiana. I saw them in Virginia. I saw them in Kentucky. I don't remember where else. And they would go to these conferences. And, and I, I remember one time I told them, I said, I, I've seen you in about three conferences this year. And I feel like I prophesied the same thing over you. What have you done with it? And they said, oh, apostle, we love coming to meetings that these different apostles and prophets are at. We love the, the power of God. I said, me too, in the conference field. I said, I love, me too. And I said, but I really like building stuff. And they said, well, they always came up with their phones in their pocket of their shirt or on, you know, they could hold the phone right here and you could, you know, voice record the prophetic word. And they love the excitement of the supernatural, but they refused to put the natural. They didn't walk it out. Therefore, they would never build anything in their own personal lives. 
there's different people. I see these different guys at different conferences. They'd be, hey man, you know, friend me on Facebook, friend me. And you know, I, I, you know, somebody unfriended me or something. I had a few spots. I friend a few of them. And they go to a conference every two or three weekends. And, you know, I, I just talk to these different people and I say, here's the thing. You don't live in the reality world. You love the goosebumps, the excitement, the power of God moving. But the reality is you don't want to do any work to build the prophetic that God has spoken over your life. Okay. It's like God, think about the things in the Bible that people built, okay? God did not build the ark. He called somebody to do it. They got a prophetic word. They built it. Think about Nehemiah. He had a prophetic word from the Lord. And then he had to travel a long way, and then he built it, okay? You think about Esther, the, what, what she felt in her spirit, what she was supposed to do. I perish, I perish, and she, she did it. You think about John the Baptist, forerunner for Jesus. You know, God uses people, but they have to carry out the super prophetic and bring it into the natural. There has to be a reality, okay? You drive by and you look at any business, somebody had a vision but they did the work. They saved the money, inherited the money, took a risk, got a loan, and started the business. I mean, the thing is, I don't find anybody hardly out there that wants to work for what they're called to do. And the, the problem with that is, I tell people a lot of times, they don't live in a reality world. I know people who are praying about it. I just wanna pray about it. I just wanna pray on it, I'm just gonna, and they will spend years of their life praying about things and never do one thing about it. The Bible says, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. When it's all said and done, there'll be more said than done. Because <laughs> people want to talk about the last prophetic word they got. They want, they want to talk about all of it. That's why... A lot of times people don't stick at our church very long or in our apostolic network because I will hold you accountable to the prophetic word God spoke over your life. And I have people that hold me accountable. And so what I, I want you to really grasp this reality is what are you doing? What, what is the last prophetic word you've really receive from the Lord. The last thing he's told you to put your hands to, to, to build, you know, I, I love the scripture in Isaiah where it says, he will build a road in a wilderness and a river in a desert. God doesn't do things like that by himself. God is into partnership. He is into covenant. It's so funny how many people send me messages and say, pray that I inherit or I receive a million dollars. Pray that I receive $5 million. A few years ago, somebody sent me a message and said, pray my husband and I, we, we found our dream home and, and it's a million dollar home. And we both really feel we need a new car. And they just had this long list. And I said, well, what do you do? And what does your husband do? She said, oh, I don't work. And he works a, a part-time job. I had a word for her. I said, I said, friend, it doesn't work that way. I mean, if, if you don't work and he works a part-time job, makes a little over minimum wage, that's not going to happen. But when you partner with God and what he's saying over your life, your dreams can become a reality. See, I grew up a East Texas cattle farmer's son. I mean... I was up before the roosters were. I, there's there's days I would work before school. <laughs> I'd go to school. My junior, senior year, I worked the half a day program and I would come home and I would work. And so I have a work ethic, but I also have a strong prayer life. And if you can have a prayer life and a work ethic, you're going to get somewhere in life because when the Holy Spirit speaks to you about something, you're going to 
really get in there. You're going to work it. You know, I remember, you know, just traveling all the time in ministry and like we're at a conference or something. I, I'm an early riser. Boy, I would get up in the morning and, and I may go down to the lobby or I may go on a prayer walk or something. And I would see a lot of, a lot of these guys that, that did a lot of conferences and would speak. They would be down there 5, 5.30 in the morning praying and working on a project. I remember us talking to a friend of mine and I said, man, you're, you're down here early, bro. He said, well, when I travel, I still have assignments from God, what he's told me to do personally. A lot of these guys are, are you know, they, they write books or they may have had a blog or they write for Elijah List or Charisma. Well, the thing about it is, is they want you to, when you agree to terms, reach your, you know, do what you're called to do. A lot of times people don't see the reality of what they're called to do because they can't handle a lot. Miles Monroe always said, you can have what you can manage. And the more that you can manage in life, the more that you will do, the more that you will be able to carry out, the more that you learn how to put on your plate and not be stressed, the more you can delegate, the more that you can give away. Like when I start something and create something, my whole heart is to give it away, hire somebody to do different things so I can continue to build. If I'm not building something, I, I get nervous. I get antsy. I mean, I, I gotta be building. That's just, that's in my nature. That's who I am. And so what I, I want you guys to know today is this right here, the supernatural God is releasing prophetic words in a powerful, powerful way. He is releasing so much on the body of Christ right now. But I don't see the effort of people grabbing the words and applying their natural strength to see them. I remember somebody that I kind of knew a little bit and I'd say, man, you know, what's the Lord saying? God called me to write a book and he told me the subject. I saw him about a year later, two, three, five years. And he was talking about it, talking about it. And I said, bro, look, you may write that book, but I know a lot of people in the last five years who've written a book on that very subject. And you have been the first one that I personally knew to write a book on that subject, but now they're a dime a dozen. And he missed a window of an opportunity. I've seen people locally who would tell me that they were going to start a certain business and they sat on it and sat on it. And then three or four people opened up their business. They had to jump on them in the business world. And so you got to understand when God tells you, I'm going to bless you with an opportunity and the opportunity arises don't be so naturally minded that you don't hear Holy Spirit when he says, this is the opportunity. And so you, you have to really be flowing strong in the super, but strong in the prophetic. And so when that supernatural and that prophetic collide, supernatural faith, praying full of the Lord, expecting, and then a prophetic word, and it hits together, do you know what comes out of that? When, when the natural meets that supernatural prophetic that's already collided and that natural work ethic comes in, you see 15 books right there. You see multiple businesses. You start seeing things. And then I remember one day I was in prayer a few years back and, and God said, I need you to do more. I need you to handle more. Well, what happened is I started, you know, started another business and a few more ministries and now I'm not near as stressed and I'm doing a whole lot more because I have found how to prioritize the reality of the supernatural, the prophetic with the work ethic when I need to pull back and do self-care, when I need to pull back and just go on a walk. Like we, we live in a, a beautiful neighborhood and the, the block is actually one mile and it's, and it's around a, a beautiful pond, huge pond. Some people call it a small lake. It's just a big old, big pond. Man, it, and, and it, it's about a, I don't know how long of a walk it is, but it's, it's a walk. And 
and it's it's just it's just good. It's just you get your mind clear. I get my mind clear and go go back at it. You and, and the cool thing is you you need people in your life that can help you steward this. People who understand the the supernatural and the natural. I remember one time, this uh, this lady never, never met her. She was a, an older lady. She was messaging me, and and she said the Lord said that I am going to start a business and it's going to provide for my my family. So okay, she said I have like three adult kids and some grandkids, and I just want to help them out. My husband's passed, and and I want to help them out because they struggle. And I said okay. And so I prayed with her and I gave her a business opportunity and she didn't want it. Three months later, you know, she called back and said, pray. God said he was going to give me a business. And I said, well, I got two or three friends that have different types of businesses. Um, you know, I could, I could point you in some directions. And three months later, six months in, she said, I feel like I'm about to lose everything. I said, well, you told me God already gave you some money to start a business and he was going to bless it. She said, well, well, I'm starting to live off of it. And six months later, I said, why haven't you started? I gave you an opportunity. I told you about two or three friends of mine who had different types of businesses. Business opportunities are everywhere. And she said, all of my money that I had saved up to start a business with, I've spent it to live. And now I'm losing my home. Why is this happening to me? And I said, friend, the Lord gave you a word. I tried to help you, but you refuse to put natural steps, natural steps on the prophetic word God had for your life. For 12 months, you just kept going down. And so what I want you to know, guys, is when you're going after the things of the Lord, you, you got to build. I remember my friend and I, Jeff McFarland, we started up a prayer meeting about nine years ago on Tuesday night, still going, still going. And that we're praying for revival and awakening. And I remember, I mean, you would go in, you'd pound that wall, just break through, just go in, just pound that wall, just every Tuesday night. And one night I went into prayer, was ready to go and went in to pound that wall to break through revival and awaken, but that wall wasn't there. And I said, okay, Lord, what, what, what's going on? That, that wall's not there. And the Lord said, you, you broke through. Now build. Now build. So we, we started a few more prayer meetings, started doing some revival nights and had a ministry called Burn Texture Canna, and then went, did that for a few years and rolled that over into Roar, um, Revival, Outpouring, Awakening, Reformation, right there, Roar. And then the Lord said, start a church. We launched a church in 12 days. Who in the world starts a church in 12 days? And we started it, you know, we have Roar weekends, you know, um, people come in. We have, a lot of times we bring in like a different worship person or um, a different minister. And a lot of times we just do it ourselves because our church is filled up with prophetic people, um, powerful ministers. And so we just started it, burn, rode into that. And the thing is, for nine years of prayer, we're believing for the supernatural. We flow in the prophetic real strong. But when God gives us an action step, we go for it. Now we have a building and actually we bought two parts on a, um, it was like a shopping center. It was in, in the right in the middle and at 90 degree angle, we bought two buildings, put them together, got a sanctuary, seats about a hundred people. Man, I'm telling you the power of God so strong there. Last Sunday, uh, before service, I just wrote on Facebook, get to roar. It's going to be a prophetic Sunday. Man, we had different intercessors. Um, I let them start service praying. We ended with some powerful prophetic ministry. But those are action steps. It started with two guys, me and my friend Jeff McFarland, in the place of prayer on Tuesday nights. And it just grew. Things just happened. 
You know, and I'm telling you, people say, I want to be used of God. God used me. They scream out in prayer, God use me. And when he starts doing stuff and it doesn't fit their mindset, they don't like it. Listen, God's going to build how he needs to build through you. You know, people like to quote the scriptures and say, you know, you know, like in Luke, Lord, let me die to myself, pick up my cross daily and follow after you. God, let me die to my flesh. And he's like, okay. But when he really starts having you to move in the spirit, you don't want to move in the spirit. People want to feel the spirit, but they don't want to move in the spirit. So when people prophesy wealth transfer, marketplace anointing, those are doers. Those are people moving forward and doing. This is a season that God is, is calling people not to be passive, not to be sitting around, but to be movers and shakers. It's a very good season. And so, hey, I love you guys. I want to pray for you. Go to the website if you want prayer, jojodawson.net. Go to the contact button, hit it. Send me a prayer request. Man, I want to pray for you. This is the time that you need to go go all in, okay? I'm just excited about what God's doing in this hour. And so be poised, be leaning into the Lord and be ready. All right, well, love you guys. Remember this, I never send anybody any links for money. There's a lot of scammers out there. They've been scamming a lot of people on a lot of different people's um, Facebook, YouTube channels that are not real. If you ever want to give to our ministry, I appreciate it. The links will be on YouTube in the box below and on Facebook. Every now and then I'll put it on the links, but you can go to my website and give. Don't ever give when somebody messages you and says they're me. I'll never ask you for money, okay? So love you guys, and man, y'all have a super blessed day.